All right, Jonathan and Anton, we're here. We have Roman Catholic, Roman Catholic out of Philadelphia taking on Arlington Christian. Taking on Arlington um, Country Day, Arlington Country Day, Arlington Country Day out of Jacksonville, Florida, out of Duval County. All right, we're going to work things around here. Nasir Bostic, Nasir Bostic will have it. He'll swing it around to Tony Carr. Good strong rebound there. Roman Catholic came into this tournament, I think, the number nine team in the nation and slowly went down. They <laughs> suffered a tough one to Osmar. Osmar out of Florida. Arlington Country Day, uh, usually a parentally ranked team in the state of Florida. They always win, long three ball. Another strong rebound there by 35 for Roman. Paul Newman. Good sounding name. <laughs> Turnover, we're gonna go the other way. Mr. Dorch. Oh! Nasir will pin that to the backboard. Now you saying the Roman Roman Catholic, they uh, were ranked number nine, correct? They were, they were ranked one, number nine. They are defending uh, Pennsylvania Independent, Independent Athletic Association 4A state champions. I don't think their rank is gonna go down that much after the performance Oldsmar has put on here. That is true. Osmar put on a great performance. Turnover strip. Oh, got the old man, buddy. Oh. Here we go. Mr. Dorch throws it down. In the face, as they like to say. Mr. Dorch gets up high. I'm hoping that's not the same guy for Roman. Yeah, I hope that isn't the guy who, who, had, who was introduced to Mr. <laughs> Baxter in that first game. Uh, Jonathan, we have had some exciting action here at this Chick-fil-A Classic. Coach Coach Hemi, well, I'll tell you a little bit about Coach Hemi over here, CoachHemi.com, Jonathan Hemingway. Follow him at uh, JL Hemingway PSB. Appreciate you guys having me on the mic here today. Good throw down by Koch Barr. Just got back off of the road. I was down at the City of Palms Classic uh, this past weekend, checking out the action down there. Took a day off, spent some time with my family. Talk to Marcus, inviting me up here for the Chick-fil-A Classic. Excited to be with you guys here in the booth. Man, I'm glad to have you here, Jonathan. Jonathan, you, I know, well, I can't say you missed exciting basketball. You were down there at the City of Palm, so you had to see a little bit of basketball. But here, my <laughs> goodness, we had some displays of athleticism that could only be matched by probably me when I was younger. <laughs> nice lay, no, doesn't roll. Bar grab a rebound, and they're off and running. that 2-3 zone, really clogging up the middle, controlling the glass here. That's why you see just a 2-0 game just a couple of minutes into this game. It'll be a, it'll be, oh, three ball makes it look pretty as he knocks it down right there. Ty Gatson, he's a shooter. And you see the 2-3 zone here, Arlington Country Day really getting out, cutting out the lane, but a good job here. Can't get that layup to go. Lamar Stevens will come up a little bit short. 6'6 six, six forward, signed with Penn State. One more time in the open court. Arlington Country Day during the warm ups. Arlington Country Day looked like they were practicing for the slam dunk contest during the warm ups. Everybody was going over the rim. I, I, I thought about taking off my loafers and coming out there myself. Yes, sir. Hope they have the legs at the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope they have some legs left. Teams are playing three games in four days. Everybody gets Sunday off. Baseline cutter. Tony Carr over there, he'll work it around. Another one signed with Penn State. They have three Penn State signings. Knock it down, young man. Number 24, Daquan Davis with the three ball. Hey, you mentioned those Penn State signees. I actually had a chance to, to watch uh, all three of those guys with the uh, New Jersey players this summer on the EYBL uh, circuit. You see Lamar Stevens right here driving into the lane. Gets that shot blocked, but another strong elite 100 caliber type player 
uh, in Stevens. Tony Carr, another one of those uh, elite uh, players here for Roman Catholic. Yes, sir, Tony Carr. It looks like Penn State just decided to go to Philadelphia, stop off at Ro Roman Catholic, said, hey, here's my recruiting class for 2016. Come on with me, guys. Exactly right. Exactly right. Got to keep them home. Got to keep them in state. There you go. That's one of the keys to a recruiter. You got to keep the fence around your state. Keep a fence around your state if you want to dominate. Long range three. And he knocks it down with ease. Demir Hazich. Just waiting to see how I pronounce that guy's name. <laughs> well, this ACD team, they have some shooters, man. They have some great shooters on the team. Great athletes, actually. Yep. See, Hazit, great length there, standing at six foot eight. One of those hybrid forwards that you would, uh, you know, kind of call in this this type of game. A guy that can rebound and hit the three pointer. Bar gets the hard hoop. On the inside, bar sign to go to Bradley. Let's see what we bring up here. Got a timeout over here on the side. All right. All right, we're back here live at the Chick-fil-A Classic. Score 310, score 310. Sounds like a good first quarter football game score. Yes, sir. Speaking of quarters, we're playing 16-minute halves here at the Chick-fil-A Classic. 16-minute halves. Usually in high school, they play 12-minute uh, twelve minute, ha 12 minute quarters, right? Or 8-minute eight, eight eight quarters. 8-minute eight eight quarters. Like Coach Hemi said, they're in that 2-3 two, three, two, three zone, packing it in. Three ball. <laughs> they might have to come out a little bit. I guess that's one way you you change that zone look up. Hazik lets it fly. To another one. Hazik. Davis with the three on one end, and Hazik with another three on the other end. Both of those guys now with two three-pointers each. Not afraid to put it up. Hard working on the inside. Scramble on the floor. Newman will get it. Newman. We're going to send Newman to the line. Let Newman shoot too. Arlington Country Day um, kind of playing with a heavy heart. Uh, not a heavy heart, but uh, usually on the sideline. We're used to at the Chick-fil-A Classic. We're used to seeing Rex Morgan, longtime coach of Arlington Country Day. He's uh, fighting. He's fighting uh, throat cancer right now and want to wish him a speedy recovery. We want to wish him a speedy recovery, so we'll see him back here next year. Truly, truly. Roaming the sideline for Arlington Country Day. I'm a little disappointed in Arlington Country Day because they're the home team. Last year, Arlington Country Day came out here where they were the uh, visiting team, and we got to see the brightest uniforms in the world, Coach Emmy. They had a lime green uniform. <laughs> if you turned off the light, they could still play ball in yeah. their uniform. Yeah, I actually got a chance to watch them play last year at the Marshall County Hoop Fest when they had Mario Kegler last year. And I remember those those bright green uh, jerseys. You know, not only were they uh, lighting the gym up with their jerseys, but uh, certainly with their, their jumpers and the dunks. Yes, sir, athletic team. Mario Kegler. Mario Kegler's here at the Chick-fil-A Classic, still putting on a show. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's traded teams, went up there to Oak Hill. And Mario Kegler had a few run out dunks last night that it, it totally ignited the crowd, set the whole crowd on fire. It was a jam packed facility here all weekend long. Jam packed, free throw good. DeAndre Vilmar knocks it down. 
Chris McNeely over here, head coach of the Roman Catholic high school team. Like I say, defending, I'm sorry, McNesby, Chris McNesby. Free throw hit the front of the rim and roll off to the side. They're the defending 4A state champions. They were the number nine ranked team in the nation. We'll see where they are next week. Like I said, that ranking, they shouldn't go too far down because that old smart team is probably going to enter the ranking. Nice backdoor cut. They'll get it to Barr, and Barr will throw it down with two hands. Great patience there by Arlington Country Day. Swung it around, able to reverse it, the drive down the lane, and then the unselfish dump off there for the dunk. That's my guy, Alonzo Verge, on the dump off. Verge. Verge played a great game at point guard. Even though even though the ACBC lost to uh, Oak Hill, Verge played a tremendous game. Three ball comes up short. Uh-oh, a couple of trips, a couple of falls. Court Munster jumped out and got a couple of people. Give and go, no go. I mean, no give. Oh, he'll get it back on the hard way. And again, that's Hajit getting it done inside and out. They got him with the travel. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here with two coaches, and what's going on in the world today with these kids? Everybody's catching the ball and taking that false step and getting called travel. I've seen that call more this weekend. It, it might be something in the water with these kids nowadays, not putting the ball on the floor. They're thinking too fast. <laughs> Let the game slow down, you know. Think about your fundamentals. Either that or it's just old time refereeing and they're not really watching the footwork and they just think that they're moving too fast. I, I'm an offensive guy, man. I like to see boys <laughs> go on the board, man. This is Stevens here in the open court. And you can see his versatility. He's a four player. He's going to play a lot in the high post, but you can mm. see the ball handling. Oh, tries to get a little fancy throw it over his back. Should have threw it up in the air for, for the trailer. Burge, oh. too hot. Good hustle. Stevens in the open court. No doubt in my mind when Stevens had the ball at half court, he was going to be the one to lay it up. <laughs> yeah, he's talking to the referee right now. He wanted that foul. Good, strong guy. First watched him a couple of years ago at the EYBL Peach Jam. Uh, actually at the 16U, one of the younger levels. Great athlete, you see the good frame. One of those tweener, combo forward type players. It really projects well to be able to come in, play at Penn State future years, be able to give some immediate contribution. You're exactly right about his frame. He has a great frame on him right here. <laughs> Stevens, one of the candidates for my all-tournament, all-man body team, all-grown man, all-grown man team. Doesn't look like he's 17. Check his ID on that kid. <laughs> Second free throw, good. Tony Carr. Smooth guard going to Penn State. Dort. Against Dort out of Quebec. Pass ahead. Paul Newman had a little push off down there. You saw Dort had that had that monster hammer jam earlier in the game. He's another he's another candidate for me. <laughs> for my all-grown man body team. Yes, sir. See Roman Catholic getting some fast break opportunities, but quite honestly, not doing a great job of capitalizing on these opportunities. They can get out and run, get some easy lay-ins, get into that full court pressure. They might be able to cut into this lead a little bit more. Yeah, they've missed plenty of opportunities on their fast break transition. Carl have it. They'll swing it over to Vilmar. 
Back down low, Stevens. Carr up top. Carr thinks about it, kicks it out to Ballstick. Ballstick. Bill Maher moving the ball around. Newman, get that out of here, says Maher. Dortch, back to Dortch. Oh. Oh. Good hands right there for Tony Carr. See the value of having a 6'11 player anchor the back of that 2-3 zone. Cock bar down there, swatting the shot out, and keeping Roman Catholic from getting those easy buckets. Lamar Stevens, great athlete in the lane, but he's having some trouble finding some space down there, and rightfully so because of Barr. Barr, big 6'11 kid. He'll be going to Bradley. Barr's had an impressive tournament in the lane. You know, when I was texting with Marcus earlier, or actually later last week, he said, look, you know, we may not have quite the talent that, uh, that you're seeing down there at the City of Palms, but, but boy, we, we've got some, some heavy hitters down here. And the fact that we got Roman Catholic and Arlington Country Day in the consolation game, <laughs> that, that, te that tells me you got some heat in here. Oh, tried to throw it up the bar. Oh, slap around the face. Wasn't a bad foul. Wasn't a bad foul. Want to stop that break? Well, Ballstick was off and running. Yeah, we 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 definitely seen our fair share of future D1 stars. I'm not talking about D1 players. D1 stars. We've seen them here, and um, these kids, these kids nowadays, they stay, they live above the rim. And, you know, we, and, and not only have we seen the uh, super athletic, the uber athletic kids, we've also seen some of these teams just play great team ball. No question. <laughs> I would compliment both of these teams. They've, they've shown a lot of patience on, on both ends, you know, playing, you know, making the extra pass. You saw it a, uh, a possession ago with Roman Catholic, reversing it, reversing it, getting inside out. But, hey, some pretty good defense. You got to gotta tip your cap to Arlington Country today playing that good zone defense and we've got a quality matchup here you know just 17 to 8 maybe not the scoring that the fans would like to see but definitely quality basketball on both ends three ball from the corner short shortest three-point distance on the court should be the one to knock down Dead legs from Duncan early. <laughs> Dead legs from all the Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got a timeout on the court. Arlington Country Day called timeout. We're here at the Chick-fil-A Classic, number 14. Uh, Jonathan, you know, I was here when we started in the beginning. It, this was a 18 tournament. Teams from around the city of Columbia, but tournament director Gary Fulmer, he had a vision. He said he wanted this to be a national tournament. And my goodness, it is now a national tournament. Vision achieved. Vision <laughs> achieved. As a matter of fact, last year he made it international. He went and got uh, a team from Barkington Abbey yes, from London came over last year. We had a few teams from the Virgin Islands came over a few years ago, but they were the U.S. Virgin Islands, so we, so we still had to say national. It couldn't be quite international. <laughs> but he went full-blown international last year. I like it. It's a great opportunity, you know, for these young men to come out, be seen on a really a national scale. The SUV TV, of course, you know, provides the, the glimpse, you know, into the tournament for those, you know, at home, maybe across the country that can't be here in person. But just a platform, you know, for these players to get their name out there before they hit the college court. It makes watching college basketball all the more fun because you can say, hey, I saw that guy, you know, last year at the Chick-fil-A Classic. I remember watching them on SUV TV, and it gives a little bit more context. Exactly right. I like to tell everyone I remember it um, probably exactly 10 years ago, if I'm not, not mistaken, Anton. I think it was exactly 10 years ago. I was in the gym calling the game on the radio, and it was this little kid. He was about six foot, maybe 110 pounds, soaking wet. Went by the name of Stephen Curry. Steph Curry. Put on a show yes, sir. out of Charlotte Christian. Their team ended up winning the national championship. Oh, still in the passing lane. Good. The two-hand slam. J.P. Sanders. No, I'm sorry, Justin Routh. Don't have his name in here for us. Well, anytime we don't know your name, all you have to do is score. 
<laughs> yes, sir. And you getting on. You will get on. The official score over there, they'll know it. Emerson Phillips, he's calling the game. He's the PA guy. Carl with the running floater. Soft touch. But you know, I think that whole play started just by the respect from Hat Zeke, yeah. his outside shot. No question. And again, it was good patience moving the ball around. And then Hajik was able to take the lane, has the vision, dumps it off uh, uh, to Barr underneath. Good pump fake. He'll step into the jumper. Swish. Lost Art. Mid range. The mid range jumper. Everybody wants to dunk or shoot the three pointer, but that mid range jumper. That's what takes you to the next level. Pump fake, one dribble, get to a soft spot. His first. You mentioned Hazik on, on one end, you know, the respect for his long jumper. Well, Davis has hit a couple, you know, from long range. Guess what? They knew that he could hit the long range. Shot fake, one dribble, puts in the two-pointer there. Shooters will always have a place in this world. <laughs> no question. Yeah, it's funny. I was listening to uh, – to a podcast on the way down here, Zach Lowe and ESPN. And we're talking about the Milwaukee Bucks and how they just lack shooting. You know, MCW has hit one shot outside of the paint in the month of December. Wow. You know, so you look at their record, you know, sub 500, and there were all of these expectations. And you wonder why. Well, it's because of shooting. You know, you can have all the athleticism, you know, defenders, you know, in in the game, but if you don't have guys that can stretch the floor, just look at Golden State. You know, the aforementioned Steph Curry, Clay Thompson. You know, they can put guys four positions that can hit the three a lot of times. Speaking of shooters, and he just makes it look so easy from the top of the key. Demir Hazik knocks it down. An impressive display from the outside. Stevens will track it down. Jumper from the outside, no good. Pass and cut. Good extra pass. But you know something that I like from Arlington Christian Day? What you just said, Anton, pass and cut, pass and cut. A lot of teams, my problem with uh, a, lot of, a lot of high school teams is stagnant basketball. You'll stand around and watch. Stevens gets blocked from underneath. But you know, it's a lot of stagnant basketball, a lot of stand around and watch. But you got a team that will pass and cut. Good things happen. One thing I always say is good basketball comes from good players. You know, good players have a sense of how to play the game. You know, and it's not just, you know, the dribble drills or the dunking. You know, that doesn't make you a good player. Being a good player is having all of those skills, but also having an understanding of how to play the game, just like you were talking about. All right, a minute, 36 seconds to go in the first half. Free throws, good. Drop straight through. Justin Route. 25-24, Arlington Country Day trying to impose their will here. I don't know if it's just good defense or bad shooting. 12 points, minute 36 left in the half. I think you got to give a little bit of credit to, you know, Arlington and their defense. Again, the 2-3 zone. Lamar Stevens really hadn't been able to get on track. 6'11", big body, long arms in the lane. Take away those easy buckets and you just rely upon jump shooting. Yeah. And guess what? You end up with 12 points and a half. Exactly. The Lamar Stevens has been X'd out. Coach Sean Wiseman over there, head coach. 
head coach for Arlington Country Day. Like I said earlier, taking over the duties for uh, Coach Rex Morgan, longtime coach at Arlington Country Day. He's fighting the good fight. We'll have him in our prayers here at SUV TV, everybody at the Chick-fil-A Classic. He's a fixture on the sidelines. Hadzik shoots it long. That was a heat check. Heat check. <laughs> that was a heat check. Had to make sure. <laughs> Tough shot there, but what I like about that sequence, he ran off the floppy screen, showing that he's much more than just a spot-up guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he can be mobile. He can use screens. Although that may not have been the best of his shots, definitely showing uh, that he, he can be a, a guy that can catch and shoot off the move. Three ball, good, Tony Carr. Definitely from Philadelphia. <laughs> Roman Catholic out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Home of the 76ers, home of the Eagles. Not too many people. I don't know if they're claiming the 76ers nowadays, though. <laughs> they might say that. They might say the 76ers and Hershey, Pennsylvania, or something. They gave them uh, South Jersey. They gave them the South Jersey. <laughs> All the more reason to root for Roman Catholic, right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, got away with a carry. It has been hard. Hard selling for, for Mr. Lamar Stevens this evening. Yeah, yeah, it has been. He's forcing a lot right now, too. I think it's frustrating. He needs to get this halftime sooner than later Team fifth. so he can get, get, bring his composure back. Lamar Stevens kind of reminds me of a poor man's Miles Bridges. <laughs> they kind of kind of resemble each other and that their frame and their mindset. Because Miles Stevens loves to duck that shoulder and go to the basket. But as he showed last night, he can hit that big outside shot when you need him to. Clutch. Just can't get it to go in the bucket. <laughs> he can't get it to go in the bucket. <laughs> he probably shocked himself. He didn't know he was that open underneath the basket. His first. Team six. I like the comparison there, Stevens to Bridges. When I first saw Bridges with Huntington Prep a few years ago, he had a game very similar to Stevens. He played a lot in the high post. Kind of classified him as one of those undersized forwards, you know, if you will. But the thing that he's added to his game, like you mentioned, you know, the range on the jumper, the ball handling skills. And I think when Lamar you know, steps on campus for the Nittany Lions, you know, the next year. That's going to be one of the areas that I think he's going to, you know, try to put a lot of work in into to expand his game as well, too. Barr with the follow at the buzzer. Cuts Barr closes out the half. The score, 28-17. Roman Catholic losing to Arlington Country Day. We'll see you back for second half action here at the Chick-fil-A Classic. Seconds inbound pass to Marbury as he works on the defense of Johnson, dribbles by Robinson, takes it to the baseline, running jump shot, good!
All right, we're back here at the Chick-fil-A Classic. We're gonna go live on the sideline. Live on the sideline. Good afternoon, I'm sideline reporter DeAndre Mack here with Arlington Country Day coach, Sean Wiseman. So you guys are up by 11 right now. Um, but what are some things you still like to fix for second? Uh, we just we just can't give them second chances. Uh, we've got to keep them off the boards. Uh, we gave them three or four opportunities to get you know second points, uh, second chance points, and, and that hurt us a little bit. So clean up that a little bit and, and, and just you know keep executing on offense, and we'll be fine. All right, good luck. Thank you. I've been selling reporter DeAndre Max signing off for RNE TV. All right, thank you, DeAndre. Well, we're back here live, live, live at Richland Northeast High School. I'm Sylvester Williams, joined by Anton Bennon and Coach Coach Hemi, Coach Jonathan Hemingway. Coach Coach Jonathan Hemingway, you can find him at CoachHemi.com. You can find him on Peach State Basketball. You can find him everywhere. You can find him on the corner. You can find him on the SUV TV. You can find him on SUV. You can find him outside. Any, anywhere it's a basketball game, Coach Hemi might be around, might be a local city park. Let's go over a little bit of stats at, at the half. Um, Arlington Christian, uh, Arlington Christian, Arlington Country Day, Arlington Country Day shooting 44%. Roman Catholic shooting 17 from three point land. Roman Catholic shooting 27 and Arlington shooting 40. And rebounds are almost even. Roman Catholic has 18 and, Ar and Arlington Country Day has 19. Pretty close. Pretty close in the stats, but the one that's the glaring factor is that 44% compared to 17.9. Yeah, the shooting percentage, I think, is the tail of that half, and, and that's the reason why you see Roman with only 17 points going into the locker room. I know that they're going to want to improve upon that stat. Got to put the ball in the hole. That's the name of this game. Exactly right. Exactly right. Three ball, no good. Strong rebound. Ball batted around, played a little bit of volleyball over there. Referees talking, trying to figure out who ball it is. We're going to stay down here. Good call by the refs. Arlington Country, they'll have it, and they'll work it around the top of the key. Gatson will have it. He wants to set things up. Move it over to Davis. Send it in the corner of the bar. Back out to Gaston in the corner to Davis. Davis, no good. An adjustment at halftime by Roman Catholic. Now they're the ones coming out in a 2-3 zone. They weren't real happy with their man-to-man -man defense evidently, so they're going to switch it up, go zone defense. And on the other end, Arlington going to stick with the 2-3 as well. Stick with what you know. Stick with what's working. Ball stick going baseline. They'll give it up to Carr. Stevens, up and under, send it back out to Boston. No good. Guys still can't get anything on the inside on this 2-3 zone. Everything's going, coming from the outside. 2-3 zone is just taking to, to the press. And that goes to show you in the points for the points in the paint, points in the paint. Roman Catholic has two points in the paint. Two points in the paint. Wow. ACD, they have 12 in the first half. Great basketball here. Good movement. Post entry. Kick back out. Can't get rewarded with the jumper, though. Strong move to the hole, but it will not fall. Tough shooting night for Lamar Stevens. Lamar went 0 for 8 in the first half. 2 for 2 from the line. Get it inside the bar, bar with the post spin, no good, baby hook. Baby hook needs to grow up a little bit. Good nice move. Tony Carr. Tony Carr scores. Sitting behind us are the Roman Catholic fans. Made the trip down 95. Made the trip down 95, crossed over on 20, and ended up on the front steps of Richland Northeast High School to come and support their team. Oh, 
Off touch from, Ro from Lamar Stevens from Roman Catholic. Well, we've seen Stevens attack the basket, attack the rim with the drive. This time he elects to just pull up for the jumper. Let's see if that's something he goes back to in future possessions. And it's cooled off a little bit. He had three three-pointers in the first half. Tony Carr start to assert himself. I like Carr's game a lot, man. Point guard, got good link as, as a ball handler, the soft touch, the nice release. Hey, Roman Catholic starting to gain some momentum here. You know what I say, Sly. Once momentum changes that dress, it's hard to get it back. It's hard to get it back once Mr. Momentum changes his home address. Tony Carr knocks it down. And it is a four-point game just like that. A game that seemed like in the first half could be a runaway. Now it's a four-point game. Let's see if Arlington answers. Attacking the middle of that zone, laying up the soft floater is good. Ty Gatson. Look at Carr. Look at Carr. Oh, excuse me, that's Bostic. Nazar Bostic, Nazir Bostic going to the hole. Oh, right back and at him. Right back at him. Gaines Dortch. He is definitely on my all grown man team. Six-point game, Arlington Christian League. I mean, Arlington Country Day League. Not sure why I want to keep calling them Arlington Christian. Off the backboard, the bank was open. Well, according to you guys, maybe maybe these guys rested up at halftime after dunking all of the time in pregame. Yeah, these guys are full speed ahead now. Got them with the travel. Well, the story of this early second half has definitely been the change in momentum here by Roman Catholic. And, you know, if there's one adjustment that you can point to, it's been the 2-3 zone on defense. And it, it doesn't make sense that a change in defense could lead to a change in momentum on offense, but that's exactly what's happened. Well, you know, when you step that defensive game up, your offensive game improves. Exactly. Steven's still having a rough night from, from the field. It's a two-sided game. One side helps the other. They'll work it away. Ball will slip out of the hand, and they're off and running. Bostick will get it. Bostick, they get him with the travel. He walked before he was fouled. <laughs> Jim isn't quite full yet. Car going in, scoop shot. <laughs> Bostic is, he's gone to the referee now twice saying, hey man, I got hit. <laughs> he might, might have gotten hit uh, below, the, below the belt. I, I think that's why he's a little shooken up. Cat hitting those nether regions down there. <laughs> But to build on that idea that we were just talking about, the defense, the 2-3 defense here by Roman Catholic, has kind of tempted Arlington country into taking some quick jumpers, you know, some just okay shots. And guess what? Roman Catholic turns those rebounds into transition points, which is exactly what they want to play. They want to play that up-tempo game. Yes, sir. When they're in the transition, Arlington country can't get back in that 2-3. Them out Agreed. Two point game. Let's see how Arlington Country responds. Dorch will have it. They'll send it over. Back to 
George attacking the basket. <laughs> we're gonna give Paul Newman. We're gonna give Paul Newman an Oscar nod on that. <laughs> I thought it was a good no call. I thought he was planted, but there wasn't enough contact to really warrant uh, a foul either direction. I think they get fined for that move in the NBA. <laughs> they get fined for that serious flop. Kingsby will have it. Now he'll send it over to Verge. Verge on the backside, trying to get it to Dorch. Carr. Tony Carr. Tony Carr has nine points so far in the second half. He has taken over. And again, it's just what you were talking about, Anton. It was the defensive rebound that led to the transition game. And boy, when Tony Carr can get out in space, he can make things happen. Like to see that young man's game. I'm not a big, not a fan of Big Ten basketball over there in Penn State, but I'm going to have to check him out a little bit come next year. Now, hey, now, easy, Sylvester. You're looking at a Purdue fan and a University of Illinois fan. This is Big Ten country over here on the SUV. I, I would like to tell you guys that you guys now live in the South. <laughs> I hate I hate to inform you, but that good weather comes with a price. <laughs> exactly right for that. Like we're, that we're gonna you're gonna be ACC country, SEC country. During football season, we'll let you go SEC basketball. We'll slide you over to ACC. <laughs> Welcome to the South. I don't think Marcus is gonna give up uh, Caleb Swanigan and the Purdue Boilermakers anytime soon. We'll, we'll keep our winning ways down here. When, when we win, we like to say Carolina as a whole. <laughs> we say Carolina as a whole when, when we're winning. North and South. North and South. Yeah, I got you. Unless we start talking about girls basketball. <laughs> University of South Carolina Lady Gamecocks. They were out here in force last night. Had a, had a few Lady Gamecocks show up to the game. Uh, they had the whole, they, the whole team here. The mascot, was mascot cocky was out here somewhere. Let me tell you, Don Staley getting it done. She is, and not only last night we had the lady Gamecocks, and Saturday night we had the, the uh, men Gamecocks, led by um, young man out of Lancaster. What's his name? Lamar Stevens a score. It was all set up there by nice look, good vision there by Tony Carr. Working the back line of that zone is Stevens and finally gets a two-footer to fall. I think on Saturday night we had the male basketball team, the, the guy, the guy Gamecocks out here, led by um, Thornwell, Lancaster High School, and also he played it. He came to cheer on his old team, Oak Hill. Came to, came to cheer on Oak Hill. He's an Oak Hill player, former Oak Hill player. Came out here to cheer on Oak Hill. Oak Hill set a scoring record. They got it down the bar. Good block from the backside. No real call foul. Got him with his body. But Oak Hill set a scoring record last night. They had 95 points. 95 points. The team will remain nameless. Nameless since the assistant coach is sitting in the booth with us. <laughs> we won't say who they put up those 95 on. <laughs> Blythewood. <laughs> Just check the records. Blythewood. <laughs> Barr knocks down the free throw. Been impressed with Barr. You know, obviously we've, we've mentioned the, the defensive capability, the shot blocking, you know, taking up space. But the offensive presence, Surprise me. I, I'll, I'll be honest. You know, normally when you see a big guy like that, you think, you know, project. But uh, mm -hmm. definitely not the case here. You know, he's been scoring at a pretty good rate. You know, one thing I've, I've liked what I've seen so far about out of a lot of the big men, a lot of the seven-footer, six-eleven guys I've seen in this tournament so far, a lot of them can shoot free throws. Mm -hmm. 
that's, you know, and, and I, I come from an era, you know, where the big man can't shoot free throws. <laughs> A lot of these big guys, the seven footers, the six eleven guys, they can actually shoot free throws and have great form doing it. I need to correct myself. Earlier in the broadcast, I said that uh, I saw Stevens and Bostic, those guys with the New Jersey players. I was wrong. That was team final that I had watched them with just popped into my head, so I want to make that correction uh, for those listeners at home. Oh, yeah. Team final, team up there in that northeast, northeast section, northeast corridor, corridor of the United States up there. One of the great things about SUV, the sports utility vehicle, well, walking by the, walking by the camera right now, you'll see some of Oldsmar, You'll see some of Oldsmar walking by the camera. These guys put on an impressive show last night. Game going into overtime. Baxter hit the, the big man, hit the big three-pointer to send the game in the overtime. I thought it was over. I was packing up my bags, getting ready for the next game. But we got some free basketball last night against Huntington Prep. Ooh, tough shot. Looks like somebody might have moved the rim over on him while he was shooting. They're going to keep it here with Arlington Country. From my vantage point, it looked like it was <laughs> off on white. Yeah, but too. I know Lamar Stevens was saying the same thing. Nice pass. Way to find the cutter. Way to move without, without the ball. You know, those are just signs of good teams. You know, one man finding the cutter, the other man moving without the ball and allowing himself to be found. That's just a sign of a good team. There's Troy Baxter walking by the table. Big time high flying kid. Uh, Hemi. Jonathan, I know you, you missed I know you missed it live, but I know you had to see it all over Twitter, all oh, over the, the world. Dunk. Oh, the big time dunk. I sure did. Dorch knocks it down. My goodness. Troy Baxter dunked on some kid so hard. I think he may have disrespected two generations in the future <laughs> from that kid. <laughs> it, it all feels shame. I've seen all type of memes and memes and tweets going around. One of them, my favorite one, said Troy Baxter should have been arrested. For yes. Assault. <laughs> nice three-point shot right there by Tony Carr. This has been a good half for Tony Carr. Yes, exactly. He's had the runner, the driving game, and now the three-pointer going. Tony Carr has 12 points in the second half. Dortch. Dorch with that grown man. He's got, he's got that Lance Stevenson grown man game. <laughs> Strong going to the bucket. Maybe Strong. not as tall as Lance, but you know, a similar, similar type feel to his game. They got him at one of those um, high school basketball height listings. They have him at 6'3". Seriously, Dobby, 6'3". But he's a strong kid. And he's, he opened the game off with a strong dunk. Carl have it up top. They'll move it around, kick ball. Good patience here by Roman Catholic. You know, you don't want to come down, you know, against a 2-3, just make one pass and shoot up a jumper, you know, especially when you see a 6'11 guy down there in the middle. Got to make him work. Got to make the defense shift side to side, try to find a gap. Oh, in and out. Pushing, pushing 
Lost the dribble. And they'll bring it back. Dorsch tries to get him off it. Hatsik tripled him. Traveled a couple of times and got away with it. It's interesting to note, we haven't really called uh, Hasek's name at all in this second half. And, and you would think it gets a 2-3 zone that that would be a shooter's delight, but it's been quite the opposite. They've been able to find him a little bit easier, a little bit quicker, prevented him from getting any quality looks. And as a result, I don't think he scored. No good. They're going to call jump ball. And, and Jonathan, let me introduce you into my world when it comes down to this jump ball. That is the call that I hate. <laughs> I hate the jump ball call. I think if you're going to jump ball, go to the center and let them jump. Let them tip it off. NBA rules, right? Yes, sir. Well, I, I can see that. Um, you probably don't watch a lot of uh, women's or girls' basketball, at least at the youth level, because we would just have a, a consistent <laughs> jump ball all the time. <laughs> exactly right. Foul on the Apaches, number 23, Lou Gore. That youth level, man. Yeah. yeah. I think it's the referees third. get out just Team six. jump ball. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel where you're coming from, especially at you know this high level of, uh, of game where the, the jump ball doesn't happen you know, just on every possession. And, you know, it's like, to me, you don't reward the guy for hustling and sure. getting over there and tying the ball up. Floor wet. Yeah, good, good job there by the referee. He, he recognizes that. Uh, ball boys need you. Yep. Yeah, oh, that was Dick Vitale's, you know, big thing for years. You know, if there's going to be a jump ball, well, just give it to the defense, you know, if, it, if it's going to be a hustle play. So, yeah. Hear what you're saying. Reward the hustle. Ball boys out here earning their money. You guys got a good seat. Got to earn it. Earning that T-shirt. There you go. One for all. All for one, one for all. Something like that. Roman Catholic will move it around. my fans out there from Roman Catholic during that first game we had quite a few Roman Catholic fans out there out there following me tweet me live during the game you can tweet us at SUV TV or you can get me at slider sports guy Tony Carr puts it up no good Lamar Stevens with that strong rebound George bats it around Carl get it gotta go up strong Good, Good strong. Nasir Bostic uses the rim to steal off the big bar. Used his body very well, too. You know, kind of initiated that contact to be able to create that space to be able to finish under the rim. That's one of the things that they talk about. And there's a oh. big alley oop. Alley oop jam, number 31, Koch Bar. Great court vision, great teamwork right there for. Let's see. That's a big bucket right there, too. Uh, Roman Catholic cut the lead to one and right back the other direction. The alley-oop hopefully Dorch. be able to get that momentum back in their favor. Dorch throws it up the bar and bar throws it down. Three-point ball game, three minutes, 39 seconds to go. We're here at the Chick-fil-A Classic in Columbia, South Carolina.
All right, we're back here live at the Chick-fil-A Classic. They'll give it to Barr and Barr walk it up court. Roman Catholic will work it around. Roman Catholic. Three ball. Oh, in and out. Faustic working hard down low. No foul call. Referee is letting them play. Intentional foul call. Oh. Intentional foul? Oh. Roman Catholic, number 11, Lamar Stevens. I'm not sure about the intentional part. I mean, every foul is intentional, but come on. Coach McNesby is over here trying to figure out what's going on himself. Having a conversation with the referee. Pleading this case. That's a tough one right there. That's a real tough one. I mean, anytime a guy is going up for a shot and you get a piece of his arm, well, I mean, typically you think he's trying to block the shot. I mean, that's kind of <laughs> – yeah. Maybe the referee saw something everybody else didn't see. I guess that's that's the lesson here. Uh, he gets paid the big bucks. I'm just here because I'm good looking. <laughs> oh. And that was a big turn of events. You know, Roman Catholic felt like they were fouled on one end. That turns into a transition on the other end, which turned into two points and the basketball five-point lead for Arlington Country Day going into really the last two and a half minutes of this contest. What a swing of events. Had Zick, no good. He's going to go from the outside in the second half. Well, as much as, and I think he, he might have hurt himself right there. I Hopefully. think he took, a, he took a knee into the thigh while he was trying to get him. He caught one of those knees yeah. right into his thigh. I was hoping it was just a Charlie horse. But, hey, the first half was about shooters. You know, Hadjik, we saw Jackson. Excuse me, was it Jackson? Uh, that that hit the, excuse me, Daquan Davis. Daquan Davis, yes, Davis. The Second half has been really more about finishing at the rim, penetration, transition. Yep. And as the game has gone up and down, you know those shooters, you know, when you have to expend a little bit more on the defensive end, those shots start coming up short. Sorry, Boston out there having a tough time walking. He's directing the towel boys. Trying to, as a matter of fact, he's about to just take it. He's going to take the broom and just get it himself. <laughs> Sorry, Boston says he slipped one too many times. Yes, sir. 2.30 left here. It's still anybody's game. You know. Roman can go on the run here, but they have to make some stops. They have to get some stops here. Five point game. That's the four foul on Lou Dort to all into country day. 17 fouls. We'll shoot one and one. A lot of, a lot of wet spots out of here. A lot of wet spots. That means a lot of bodies diving on the floor. Referee earning a little bit of extra Shout money. He's, boys and officials trying to keep this court safe today also. <laughs> He's a referee out there swipe, sweeping the floor too. I don't think he's going to get paid any extra for it. No, no, no overtime on that one. We appreciate his dedication. First free throw good by Carr. Next one good.
Gatson will have it up top, and he'll set up the offense. Five counts going. Give it back to Davis. Demir, yes, sir, they're going to call charge. DeAndre Vilmar stepped up and drew the charge. Anton, you said it right. Plenty of time left. This game could really go either direction. Big defensive stop there by Roman Catholic. Let's see what they do here on this offensive possession. Carr slips off underneath to Bostick. It's funny, Lamar Stevens is supposed to be the guy finishing around the bucket, but he's really struggled today. So now they found Nazir Bostic, normally a perimeter guy, a guy that plays on the wing that's had a lot of success. Now he's got a chance for a three-point play to tie this game up under two minutes. Shoot one. Only call the M1 and hit the free throw. Big time free throw, one point game. Out of lane violation. Basket good. Tie ball game. Good job by Arlington. To get out of that trap yeah, on the lead. The pressure. <laughs> the Roman Catholic, the Roman Catholic trap crowd may have disagreed with that call. <laughs> may have. <laughs> they may have disagreed with that call. Good defense by Roman Catholic on that baseline out of bounds. They didn't call. They called the foul. Called the foul on the defense. Davis, his second. Daquan Davis Jr. out of Philadelphia. See Tony Carr talking to his teammate right there. He's like, man, look at the time. We don't need that. You know, a foul at 30 feet from the bucket. But they're going to luck out. They're going to be able to control the missed free throw here and draw a foul themselves. And then they were in the one and one, so we're going to go to the free throw line. And now free throws are huge. Free throws win ball games. Free throws win ball games. We'll go to the free throw line and let's see what happens. Well, sorry, Bostick will be on the line. And you know, this comes, this is one of the things where fundamentals come into play. And the Sar Bostick, all he did was box out his man. <laughs> all he did was box out his man, and now he's on the free throw line. Oh. I think you said it about five times just a moment ago. Free throws win basketball games. And here we have another missed free throw. Let's see if he can get this one to go. Little roll around. He'll get that shooter's roll. Now we have full court pressure. One, two, two. Going back this way. Going back this way, it will be Roman Catholic ball. I like the call. I like the defensive call there by Roman Catholic. Going full court pressure at the end of the basketball game. A lot of coaches would kind of tighten up right there and say, hey, we don't want to give up, you know, a transition, easy three on one, three on two lay in. But instead, they go right at him and say, hey, we're going to try to get a deflection, get a quick turnover, and it pays off. You know, big time coaching move over there by Chris McNesby. Chris McNesby, head coach of Roman Catholic. The Kaolites, the Kaolites. Had some of my Twitter followers out there on uh, Saturday. Helped me out with that name. Couldn't pronounce it. Kaolite. What, what's a Kaolite? You know, and they explained it to me too. They told me and I forget. <laughs> they told me and I forget. So, what's a Kaolite? All my Twitter followers out there, please help me out. Let me know. What's a Kale like? I might need to go back in my feed and find the young lady who uh, sent me the, the Twitter note. Who tweeted me. 
All right, minute 15 to go in the ball game. Roman Catholic up by one. They'll get it back to Carr. Carr, dangerous cross-court pass to Bostick. We'll stay down here. Bostick pleading this case for a foul. Bostick might want to step back. Notice the adjustment there by Arlington coming out of that timeout, extending their pressure. They get a deflection, just not the turnover, though. Bostick might want to pull back with the talking to the referee. You know, most of these referees don't, don't like to be talked to. They're private individuals. Especially from a 17-year-old kid, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know? <laughs> Very private individuals these referees are. Welcome back, welcome back. We're here at the Chick-fil-A Classic in Columbia, South Carolina. One point ball game. Roman Catholic's on top. Roman Catholic is on top of Arlington Country Day. They'll move it around, trap on the side. He gets out of the trap. They'll get it back to the car. What kind of patience what they have here. Playing that aggressive trap defense, zone defense. Getting in the face, 52, 51 seconds to go. Interesting, interesting right there. They elect a foul with the tie game. Nope. Not criticizing it, and this is one way down to by play one. it. You know, excuse me, they're down by one, my fault. Uh, I didn't recognize time and score right there, but uh, they, they were they were trying to go for the turnover. Go ahead and get the early foul and give yourself a chance to get the basketball back. Exactly. Put the pressure on these young men. Pressure on these young men. There's pressure situations on the free throw lines. But I like to tell people, I like to tell people all the time, pressure will do two things. It'll make a diamond or it'll bust a pipe. Either one. No good. I guess that was a good foul. Two-point ball game, trapped them in the corner. Coach is going to call timeout, bail his man out. Yes, sir. He's driven right to the, to the trap spot. And, you know, you know, Anton and Jonathan, that's one thing. I'm a complainer. I like to complain about a lot. I like to see a lot of things, you know, based on the kids. And, and I'm not a fan of the coach being able to bail you out on that timeout. I don't care what level we're on. I don't want the coach to be able to save you. I need you to think on your feet or be Chris Weber. We <laughs> call that timeout one. I mean. in, in the college game now, they, they, uh, yeah, they have to call the timeout. Yeah, okay. They've they taken that away. You're right. They're taking it away. Can't get bailed out with the big boys. There you go. Well, I guess, I guess you know, hey, they, they still are in high school, so we can give them something. But that's, that's just one of the things about, about this tournament and you seeing this type of level of athletes. You kind of forget that they are high school kids. You know, when you see so much talent in one place, man, I forget that they are, these kids are just 16, 17 years old. Right. That's a great opportunity to grow up, be able to, to gain this experience and exposure that they're going to need at the next level. Ooh, tried to find him underneath the basket. He was there, too. Dangerous pass, though. <laughs> They're going to get Stevens with the foul right there, and Stevens is looking around saying, I had inside position. The guy was on my back. <laughs> he was on my back. It's kind of odd that uh, Hatchett is not in the game. 21 for 
Yeah, the shooter's not in the game. Has it, well, he has been cold the second half, but he's not in the game with 30 seconds to go. I understand the defense offense sums up, but Hazard should have been in an offense. And you know, I'm not sure why he's out of the game. Even defense offense, he's a long, linky guy on defense, too. He, he's hopped in the passing lane a few times. Let's see what Barr does on the free throw line. Barr knocks down the first one. Barr has a smooth free throw touch. Hey, let's don't jinx him now, Sylvester. Bars three for three from the <laughs> line. Done it. I put I put all the jinx on him on that one. I said I said too much. I was trying to reverse jinx. Oh. <laughs> and they'll call foul. One point game. Twenty seven point eight seconds to go. Am I saying this guy's name right? Hedzik. Hedzik. Not being put in the game. That's what we're going to call him today. Well, you, you never know what, what the coach is thinking, especially, you know, personnel-wise. You know, maybe they weren't looking to get a three necessarily. Maybe he wanted to go four slashing guards, you know, to get the quick two. I, I would say that's maybe the, uh, the, the thought process there. But more importantly here, some missed free throws yes, on sir. both ends. Uh, to make to keep this a one point game. This is a big free throw for Bostic. He'll knock down the second one, two point game. No three, no three, on the back. He left hand. High floater, no good. Tip out. We're gonna go that way. Great hustle right there by number five. That's DeAndre. DeAndre Vilmar putting his body on the line. That's my guy Burst. 14 seconds to go. Strong pick from Barr. Got away with a offensive charge. Stevens brings it out. Give it up, Stevens. Oh, no, he wanted to dribble too much. He's, if he would have threw it up court. Yeah, one more pass and that. One more pass and that was the game. Yeah, the clock might have ran out. Great rebound, though. Great rebound. His third. Now Stevens needs to hit both of these. Big time players make these free throws. Nice free throw from Stevens. Stevens ices the game right there. What a ball game. What a ball game. Roman Catholic stayed in it to the end, and they'll pull it off 49-45. Roman Catholic over Arlington Country Day School. I'm Sylvester Williams, joined by Jonathan Hemingway and Anton Benin. We'll see you back here in about 10, 15 minutes. More from the Chick-fil-A Classic here in Columbia, South Carolina. <laughs>